Hello everyone, welcome to the 45th episode of the Ruins of Warsaw. Wow, uh, we got quite far with this. Um, I'm Alexandra and I'm the storyteller. Hi, I'm Dolores and I'm playing Kianina of Clan Brua. Hi, my name is Faye and I'm playing Beatrice of Wozniak of Clan Malkavian. And as always, partner is there in the chat and taking care of tech for us, for which we are very grateful because we'd be lost without it. Um, Thank you all so much for joining us once again to follow the story of Bella and Yanina. Um, we will start with a quick recap of what happened last time. So, in a previous episode, um, the two kindred woke up in their own haven that they, at the moment, share with Bea's sire, Felicia. And after speaking to Felicia and tasting her vita again, um, Bea first of all, revealed that her mortal husband, that she wasn't really aware of and haven't haven't thought of for a while, is looking for her. Um, And that someone might have already responded to the advert to give some information about her, some of the mortals she knew in Praga district. And secondly, while drinking Felicia's Vita and talking to her, um, Bea got some not really focused but disturbing feelings about her, something about her um, whirlwind of thoughts and feelings converging on, on something quite unknown but the center threatening to pull everything in and some preoccupation, some pain inside Felicia. Um, she also noticed that Felicia almost seemed impatient with her and her problems, something that hasn't really happened that much before. It's not quite that she didn't care, but but there was something else definitely distracting her. But uh, Bea and Yanina uh, eventually left um, to take care of other matters. And after some feeding mishaps, um, first went to the hospital where they left uh, a woman they rescued from a ghoul of Azimishi, um, whom they decided to keep alive and help, and whom Yanina promised to bind with her blood. And uh, after Bear investigated, Yanina went to the ward where the woman was. Um, And while she was sleeping, uh, fed her the first taste of her own Vita. Um, But you would know, Yanina, that to fully bind the woman to you, you would need to give her blood two more times. Although this one time is enough to already start speeding up the healing uh, of the severely injured person. After that, they separated. Lianina went to continue her research. Uh, she also spoke with Mr. Potocki, Zygmunt's ghoul, uh, and asked about volunteering at his hospital. Um, he was a bit reluctant to take her away from her duties, which left Lianina feeling not very happy that her time was being directed by someone else. Meanwhile, Bea returned to Hotel Bristol, where she spoke to a few kindred. Um, Diana, a Toreador, she helped save from Arek, thanked her for that. Um, she learned from Nina, another Toreador, that two of the Bruja, Isidore and Zoya, went to procure some materials to make explosives. Um, a gossip that quickly spread around Hotel Bristol. Um, Bea also spent some time with Antoni, growing closer with him. And um, when Yanina returned, she reunited with her lover, Nastya, um, complained about how her time is um, directed by Mr. Potocki and how she doesn't like it. And then ended up disclosing everything about trying to rescue Dominic. Um, Not necessarily prompted. Um, 
at the end of the night, Berendi and Nina reunited and um, talked about what to do about the situation with Bear's husband, uh, coming up with some ideas to consult others in the Camarilla, uh, but not clear a conclusion yet. And then you went to sleep. And we will pick up the next night when Yanina, as always, is the first one to wake up. You open your eyes as a semblance of life stirs back into your body. You still feel your remaining wounds. You are still hurt. Okay, I'm gonna do my usual routine and go. Um. By the way, since it is a new night, you can regain no. the rule power age and you can lose the blood for the night. And now I can ask you, Nina, how much blood do you have? I have eight. Oh, in this case, you're feeling all right. It's a miracle. <laughs> it is indeed. Okay. Uh... But you're not feeling immediately hungry. You're, you're fine. You see Bea is sleeping in the same room this night. Okay, I'm probably watch her for a moment to see if she's like struggling or if she's sleeping peacefully or, or semi-peacefully in her case. And if she seems all right, then I will go stand next to a window and look outside as usual. She appears to be sleeping peacefully. Uh, and as you get to the window, you see there's still snow outside. Uh, it's covering the ruined buildings that you see from your window um, and the street below it. Um, you see a couple of people walking carefully, trying not to sleep. Okay, I just watch them and... Wait for Bea to wake up, maybe glancing at her from time to time and just hoping that she will sort her problem with her husband that she doesn't remember. What are your feelings about this problem? Do you have any particular ones about the idea of Bea having a husband as well? Well, I think it's curious to me. I would like to, like, there's part of me that would like to talk to this man and ask about Bea's human life and how she used to be and just, I don't know, imagine their life together. But I respect her opinion and I know that in our situation is it's best to find a way to never see him again or more like for him to not see her but there is like some curiosity <laughs> and you wait for Bear to wake up it takes some time but still quicker than you're accustomed to Bear opens her eyes and stares and you're awake, Bear. Um, I sit up and glance around um, and see you, Nina. Good evening. Good evening. <sighs> how did you... Oh, I was about, just about to ask, how did you sleep? <laughs> Fine, thanks. <laughs> what about yourself? Same, I think. I also feel all right. I, I guess I really have to feed myself every night to not forget. <laughs> because it feels much better. And I feel more at ease. I'm glad. That's good to hear. Yeah. So, do we have any plans? I pick no. up my notebook and... Have a look. I think about, but I don't remember. <laughs> Do I have plans? Nasty, I wanted to catch up with you. Okay. But okay. other than that, 
right. nothing no, specific. Thanks. Okay, that's good. You are also aware that soon, not necessarily tonight, but fairly soon, you would need to extract the rest of the blood yeah. from the bodies. All right. If I will have time tonight, I will go there. But first, I want to check with the bear if we have anything to work on. I need to speak to the sheriff if he's available. All right. Do you want me to go with you? I can probably do it by myself, but if you don't have anything on, some company would be nice. All right. Uh... Well, we can check if he's in the Elysium and then you, if you two want to just like speak in private, I can mingle in Elysium and wait for you. Fair enough. Well, we'll see. He might not even be in. <laughs> yeah. Let's get ready and go on. Indeed. Um, Janina, I assume you are basically ready, given that you don't really... <laughs> well, I meant, really... yeah, I yeah. meant more like Bea. <laughs> but Bea starts getting ready, and as you are getting ready, there is a knocking on the door. I will get there. Uh, you open the door, and you see Rahela standing there. Oh, hello. Uh, hi, I'm looking for Bea. Of course, she... And I open the door and let Raquel inside and let her sit on a bed and just she's in the bathroom but I'm sure she's gonna be right here I think if I can hear my name through the door then I'll poke my head out <laughs> Rahela smiles at you oh good evening uh, good evening I hoped we could speak like you offered yesterday of course yes um, if that's not too much of a problem no not at all and I come through and sit down do you want privacy? I ask and glance at Dracula. <laughs> she hesitates for a moment, um, glancing from you to Bear. I. If you don't. No, it's, mind. it's all right. Of course. It's, it's completely fine. I'm gonna go catch up with Nastya. I will check in her room and meet you in the Elysium. Fair enough. Okay. I give her That's a slightly fun. mischievous smile. <laughs> Says Vahela and gives you a bit mischievous <laughs> smile as well. Looking a bit out of place, maybe on her very much childlike face. I s smile and <laughs> just go. <laughs> close the door behind me. Tactical retreat. <laughs> yeah. And you head out. Um to look for Nastia. I turn to Rahela. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? Um, a few things. I... You must know I miss Elisa. And... She is occupied by Mr. Cernovsky. Her, well, primogen of sorts, I suppose. He's not, I don't know how far he's a primogen, really. As she mentions his name, my smile gets a little bit more tense. <laughs> you work with him, don't you? I have done some work for him and. Yes, I have worked with him. And as she mentions that, I think that sort of makes that memory sort of come back a bit. <laughs> yes. I know Elisa is not happy. She, ho she was apprehensive of something like that happening. And I don't know if I... I know she hopes the prince will keep her away from him, at least as long as possible. I want it. I don't think prince has made her decision yet. 
a hard one as far as I understand. But I, I wanted to speak to her and ask and maybe give Elisa some support, but I don't... I, I wanted to ask how you would do it. In terms of supporting her or in terms of speaking to her? Both, I suppose. Well, I mean, I don't imagine that it's against any rules to speak to her. Um, I guess not. They're all perception and empathy. Mm -hmm. Uh, would insightful or hidden pain apply? Hidden pain. Okay. Uh, in which case that is three successes. Um, in this case, you see that as she talks about Prince, she mm -hmm. tenses up. Okay. And there's anger there, very visible. And Direc there's... Directed at the Prince. Yes, very clearly. And there's fear... Like, very, very strong fear mixed with it. Right. Um, first of all, I'd like to roll self-control to see whether I'm able to put a hand on her shoulder. Difficulty seven. Okay. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, that's three successes. Um... In which case, I just lean forward and put my hand on her shoulder. I'm sorry. I know this must be difficult for you, and... Well, these are difficult times. Um, but I don't imagine... You should be able to talk to her, surely. Even if it's at the start of the night. Coming to her as you've come to me, surely... Um, you should be able to do that. Um, I think being able to talk to her in private is probably the best starting point for being able to support her. Um, you mean talk to Elisa? Yes, yes. I... I know the Tremere. They're meant to be in isolation for years. Elisa was not because, well. Um, I have a just general charisma and persuasion role. Okay. Difficulty six. Mm. Um, that is two successes. Two successes. Um, then Rahela continues. Well, her sire died. But now Mr. Sarnowski is back. He has some expectations. And I know, well, I want to speak to the prince. I know Elisa was close with her. Okay. Well, if, if I can do anything to help with that, I, I can't say I've really spoken to the prince much myself, but... If you need any support to do that, then myself and Yanino, we'd be more than happy to help you. You seem very good at navigating all of this. I just generally try and be polite, and <laughs> so far that's worked. <laughs> you see that she kind of almost wants to say something at this point, but wonders whether she should. 
We're in private. You're welcome to say whatever you want. How are you polite to someone who killed your sire and wanted to kill you? That's fair. I'm sorry. I know I need to... I know I need to learn to live with it and not... I know that's the way to survive. It is, unfortunately. For me, being polite is... It is a survival strategy. It's not always how I feel internally. Perhaps there's a bit of dishonesty in there, but it's always easier, I find, to start civilly. Because once once the veil of civility has been removed, it's very hard to put it back. And I've been in situations where I've been interacting with people that I very much despised or was terrified of. But I remain polite all the same because they're less likely to kill me for slighting them. <laughs> yes, you understand it. That's why I wanted to speak to you. Not that I, ha I have anything against Yanina. <laughs> she's... She's herself. <laughs> she is very much herself. Um... And yes, she has a habit of saying whatever comes into her head. <laughs> well, she's a bruja, she can get away with some of it. Yes. <laughs> to some extent, at least, from what I gathered. Yes. She also has a good relationship with her primogen, which helps. <laughs> yes. And you have good relationship with the venture primogen. Which I'm sure doesn't hurt. I'm sure it doesn't hurt as well, but part of that, I believe, is through putting in the work and also remaining polite and I suppose submissive to a point. I'm trying to find somebody but they don't take me seriously. I'm sorry. That sounds infuriating. Well, I know I... I'm more grown up than I look, you know. I know this. I can see it. But... A lot of them don't see past appearances, which... Well... A lot of them don't see things the way that we do. No. Well... I... They don't know to look past the surface. I think they do more often than we realize as well. Yes, some of them will. But they have their biases. I don't know. I, I think you're very lucky. I'd say I have been fortunate, yes. And 
I mean, if you want lessons in etiquette, I'm happy to provide them. <laughs> but... I would appreciate that. Of course. Well... And I'll start giving her some pointers. Um, the sort of basics that um, I might remember Felicia giving me. Um, how to have the polite smile in place even when you don't feel like it um, is one of the starting points. Um, cool. And you start explaining that and you see that she is like really focused on you. Mm -hmm. Taking it all in. Mm -hmm. um. And I'm glad to see that she's taking it seriously and I take it just as seriously because, as I said, for me, this, this is a matter of surviving and it's how I get through society. And you see, you, you had a good role, so you do see in her, she's mm -hmm. definitely taking it seriously. It's even... Um, there's something... Maybe not desperate, but very, mm -hmm. very committed, very focused. Like everything else disappears and she commits everything you say to memory. And I feel like if she takes this as seriously as I can see that she is, I think that she has a very good chance. And I, at the end, I will tell her as such that I think that she has what it takes. We'll just keep discussing this and practicing. And I think that I believe that she can do it. Thank you. Of course. Meanwhile, Yanina, you are. Where are you looking for Nastya? In her room, I guess. It's the first mm -hmm. place to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you're headed. You haven't been to her room yet, I think, but you know the number now. Um, so you've wandered the hotel a little bit to find it. It's not difficult. It's just a bit different section, different floor. Um, and as you head there, you notice uh, in the corridor, Diana and Anna Maria, um, the two toreadors standing together, holding hands. Oh. Uh, kind of leaning towards each other, whispering, and you see Diana resting her head on Anna Maria's shoulder, and Anna Maria stroking her hair gently. Um, okay, if they notice me, or do I go past them? Or You will go past them, yeah, they are okay. ahead of you. Okay, then I will just uh, say hello and smile at them. Uh, they look... Uh, Anna Maria notices you first, and, and she smiles at you. Uh, and it's kind of a bit shy uh, smile. Diana looks more startled, like she hasn't noticed. Uh, but she smiles, and she says, oh, Yanina. Hi. Hi. Uh, have you met Anna Maria? <sighs> I guess not really in person, <laughs> like we have seen each other and I look at her and bow my head and just offer my hand and hi, I'm Yanina. <laughs> and she looks to you with her, again you're stunned by how beautiful she is with her absolutely stunning face. And she gives you a bit smile, ah, hello. Nice to be introduced. How are you doing, both of you? Are you well? Um, Diana turns to you and says, I'm all right, healing. I wanted to speak to you as well. I already spoke to your friend. And thank you of for course. rescuing me. Of course, I'm glad we could help you. And I hope we can help Dominic. I would hope so. And 
And she kind of glances at Anna Maria, who just nods her head. I... I hope Dominic will be all right. I hope so. She says, we don't mean to stop you, Elena. You were clearly no. headed somewhere. Oh, yeah. I'm going to visit Nastya. Has that worked out, then? I guess so. And I cheek a smile. She gives you an equally cheeky smile. And Anna Maria is also smiling, but is... Well, I don't know. Do you pay much attention to her? I probably pay attention pay attention to both of them. No perception and empathy, then. Okay. Okay. Difficulty six. Yeah, well, I have one success. <laughs> not, not a good roll. <laughs> you don't really see much on Anna Maria's face. There is a smile there. Um, not exactly as genuine warm smile as on Diana's face. Polite, gentle one. You don't really see much more beyond it. Uh, but she says, it was a pleasure to meet you, Yanina. The same. All right, I will leave you girls to it. Hope to see you around later. Have a pleasant evening. You too, says Diana. And I will just turn and go. Continue going to Nastya's room. Uh, and you continue, and you get to Nastya's room. Um, and I will knock. <laughs> you knock, and you hear steps inside the room, and Nastya opens the door. Uh, she's wearing a shirt, which is kind of not fully buttoned up yet um she's like almost ready but not quite ready um her bit wavy hair blonde hair still needs brushing and she smiles upon seeing you uh Yanina come on in Hi. Perhaps and I will come inside um and you go inside her room and you see that it is it's not really much decorated it is a fairly sparse hotel room there are uh, some books lying on the table and on the chair that's in the room um that's about it there's few bags that she has like a rucksack uh, and another bag um and she invites you to come sit with her okay i will sit the and bed. Like, glance around the room and just like say well finally i'm gonna see your room. Well, it's not much to see, I suppose. Well, I, I guess it's better than a lot of people have outside the hotel. Oh, definitely. We are lucky in that respect. Yeah. We don't have to pay with money. No. Not with money. Yeah. How's your work going? Well, it's just a lot of learning. I, I meant to speak to Sigmund tonight. We'll probably go to his place again if he wants me to. Of course, I don't want to keep you from your super important work. Well, it's just observing. I know, I'm just teasing you. I've been thinking about your super important work. Oh, yeah. The Zygmunt is always on about. Yeah, my super important work. I will have to go to the hospital either tonight, if I manage, or tomorrow to finish training the blood from the rest of the bodies before it goes unusable. Uh, 
I was thinking, I spoke to this Tremere, Magdalena. Yeah. Um, she was trying to become a doctor before the war at its start. Um, I didn't really mention the details of what you were doing because I don't, <laughs> I don't fully understand it. And I wasn't sure if I should, but... Maybe she's the someone. She's someone who could help you if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Have time for helping to volunteer, like you'd like. I think that's a good idea. I hope you are not looking to replace me with another. <laughs> oh no! Of course not. And I just smiled. It- and I'll be watching you if you're working together with her. <laughs> oh, you have nothing to worry about. I'm sure I, I could have beat her up you. if I needed to. <laughs> I would watch that. <laughs> but you, you want have me not. to. No. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> she sort of smiles mysteriously. <laughs> and I kiss her. And she kisses you back. Oh. All right, then I will probably go and stand up and just... Are you going to the Elysium? Yes, I'll be heading there. Okay, then I will wait to find Sigmund. I hope you're not running away to meet another just yet. Oh, no, don't worry. I don't think anyone else could handle me like you do. Mm-hmm. And she just smiles and kisses you again. Uh-huh. Uh, but then she she doesn't like pull you to the bed. She starts brushing her hair, um, trying to make it look slightly better, um, and buttons up her shirt. I will help brushing her hair. Oh, uh, she's a bit surprised by it, but she lets you. Okay, then I will brush her hair. And wait for her to get ready so we could go together to the Elysium. She's basically done with that. Okay. Uh, she doesn't put on any makeup. Um, she just, yeah, buttons up her shirt. Um, she puts on a jacket um, and is ready to head out. So, shall we? Of course. Lead the way. And she opens the door for you. And we are going to the Elysium. Yes, you're heading that way. Uh, Meanwhile, Bea, um, you have finished talking to Rahela about etiquette, showing her some of the tips. Um, You express your belief that it will help her survive. And I reiterate to her that she's always welcome to talk to me. And if she needs my help with anything else, she can come to me. Um, There's one more thing I wanted to ask you. Of course. What do you think of Mihail? <laughs> oh, <laughs> now there's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I think that he's a dangerous man, but I don't know. I believe. He, Hmm. Actually, I'm going to spend a point of willpower to recall Rahela's relationship with Mihail and how that came about. Of course. And I think that he took that... Uh, I think that he took the promise to Bruno seriously. And... <sighs> 
I don't know. I would still be cautious of him personally. Um, but I think having him on side is better than not. <laughs> yes, I mean, I definitely agree he's dangerous. More than people give him credit for. Yes. My sire, before he died, he told me I will find the patron I seek. Like you have the Venture Primogen. But I don't know, I... I'm not sure if that's what Mihai was trying to do. I think he respected my sire. I know he did. Mm -hmm. I know that was genuine. Okay. But I wonder if it's all there is or if he wants something more with me. I... Shall we look together? Could. Maybe one of us will see something. And I turn my focus to Mihail's offer mm -hmm. of, of protection, of whatever his offer really is. And I'd like to use Eyes of Chaos. Um, hey, roll your perception in a cult. Um, I would say with difficulty... Um, so his nature... With difficulty 8, you're not super familiar. We're, we're not exactly besties. <laughs> no. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, I have three tens in there. <laughs> All right. Um... The one will move that. Um, so, well, if would insightful apply here? Um, yes, I okay. would say so. In which case, that's six successes. <laughs> six successes. All right. So you do focus on this relationship, and you get the sense. Of Mihail and Bruno. Um, and you do see, as Bruno is playing, you hear and you see beauty, light, delight, and meaning. And you see it race from the keys of the piano that he's playing, and you see it floating towards Mihai, wrapped around his heart. And you see Rahela wrapped around, wrapped in the shadow of it, wrapped in the echo of the sound, wrapped in the echo of these emotions. Um, and you see Mihai's hand which towards her, and it is gentle, and it is protective. Okay. Um, and there is certain disinterest there, mm -hmm. but there is still a memory mm -hmm. of the sound and what it represented, and of life it brought to his heart, still there, okay. still real. And you do get the sense that it is genuine, his offer was genuine, the desire to care for Rahela, for this memory, okay. and only for this memory is genuine, but it is done only for this memory. Okay. I look to Rahela. I see that his offer is genuine and I see a gentle protectiveness, but it is tied solely to the memory of Bruno's music, of how it made him feel. 
Mihail, that is. I think as long as he still feels that connection to the memory, he is a safe bet. So keep an eye on it. Make sure that it hasn't faded. She nods her head. But for the time being, it is genuine. I don't know how fickle he is. I've not seen him long enough to determine that. He's difficult. Difficult to see through. I I always thought he was genuine. The part of me can't quite believe it. That's fair. I understand. And I think it is best to be cautious, but for the time being, it is all right. Thank you. Of course. I'm here for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's it's good to have friends here. Yes. And I value your friendship. And I value yours. Thank you. I trust you. And I trust you. I will support you in whatever ways that I can. And if you need support, you can come to me. Thank you, Rahala. That means a lot. And you see, she is very serious. Like, she's taking... Yes. It's almost like everything she says, she takes extremely seriously. And because of that, I am taking everything that I am saying seriously. Nothing that I'm saying is just... It's mean nothing that I say here is meaningless. Thank you, Mayor. Of course. Mm, well, I hope that the coming nights are brighter for both of us. So do I. I will probably be heading back to the Elysium. Yes, I should probably head there as well. But it was good to catch up. And at this point, I sort of go back to being a bit less yeah. serious. And she smiles and she will say goodbye and leave you mm-hmm. to finish yes. getting finish ready. Getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I will also head along to Elysium. Meanwhile, Yanina, since you were very quick getting there, you will get to Elysium before Beadas. Um, Nastya is um, walking with you, uh, not quite holding your hand, but definitely brushing her hand against yours several times on the way. Yeah. Okay, then, and, no, please continue. Oh, and, and you just get to the Elysium, unless you <laughs> want to do something no, in the way. Uh, that's why so. I paused. <laughs> All right. You don't see Diana and Anna Maria as you walk. Again, the corridor, they clearly moved on somewhere. Right. Found a better hiding spot. <laughs> and you get to the Elysium, and you see inside... Um, there's Mihail, as always, oh, almost please. always, um, with Stefania and Nina sitting next to him. Um, you see Cornelia is there, uh, speaking with the sheriff. You see the Nosferatu, Clement, uh, standing near them, the new sheriff and Cornelia. Um, you see Zoya and Isidore are in there, looking around, almost with a challenge <laughs> in their, on their faces, especially Zoya. 
Um, and you see Magdalena, the Tremere, sitting with Conrad in a corner, not really talking, uh, but they are touching hands and looking to each other. All right, I go look at Nastya and see mm. if she wants to go talk to someone or if we are going to sit somewhere alone. I'm waiting for Zygmunt. Uh, that's Magdalena. Yeah. If you want to speak to her at some point. Yes, I'm probably going to talk to her later. Right now, let's just sit and enjoy the view. And I'm going to sit and watch Zoya watching others. <laughs> so you do that. And as you are trying to go to sit and watch Zoya watching others, Zoya <laughs> actually starts walking towards you. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I challenged the line. <laughs> um, and before, like, Nastya manages to sit, she comes up. Um, Yanina. Good evening, Zoya. Good evening. Would you speak to me and Isidore for a moment? Of course. And I look at Nastya and just say, uh, if you see Bea and just tell her I'm going to be back in a few minutes. I will be right here. Okay. It's a quick matter. All right. And I will follow Zoya. I guess we are walking to Isidore. Yes. Um, just waiting there. Gives the slide bow. Good evening. Good evening. Shivak. I hope you're well. Yes, I'm doing all right. I hope the same about you. I am as well as I can be, all things considered. Thank you. We won't take a lot of your time. Um, and we'll let you get back to your company shortly. Of Thank course, you I... for agreeing to speak with us. Of course, I offered my help and I'm ready to listen to anything. Um, Zoya speaks up at this point. You offered to help us. Did you mean it or is it just something you said? No, I, I meant it. I want to help. So as well, everyone here already knows, because she goes to Isidore. Somebody's friend won't keep her mouth shut. We are planning to find that bitch who killed my child. Kill her. Yeah, I heard something about explosives. Yes, I can make some just in case. Should come in handy. Or at least they might. It's better to go prepared. Definitely. Has Daniel also be part of this retaliation? If he so wishes. Have you seen him? Like, lately? Uh, Isidore interjects at this point. He's well. He should be, well, around later tonight. Okay. Uh, he went with us last night. All right. uh, and he went to feed this okay. evening. Good. I'm sure he will be willing to speak to you. And Yanina... I want you to understand that you are under no obligation to help us in this risky matter, and neither is your sire. I know, but I want to help. It feels right. Uh, Zoya, if it meets your eyes, it does, doesn't it? Yes. Then we can count on you. Of course. Yes. Good. Um, 
Isidore speaks up again. It would be good to have any help we can get. But maybe take some time to think about it. There is no pressure, Vianina. I know that I really don't have anything to think of. I want to help and my offer is genuine. He just nods his head. Well, perception and empathy. Um. Well, I'm not rolling well tonight. <laughs> Difficulty is six. <laughs> yeah, I have one success. <laughs> yeah, you have no clue. Um, mm. What? I have uh, head full of nausea, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have a clue what either of them is really thinking beyond what you can see on the surface. Um, uh, Zoya says, we'll keep you informed then. Of course. You can either find me always here or in my room. And I will give them the number of my room because I'm not sure if they know. Mm-hmm. Isidore says, thank you. We really appreciate what you're doing. I just want want to help. I know I can't take things back, but I I don't know. Maybe helping you get rid of these people who hurt us it will make me feel at least slightly better. Um, Zoya nods her head. I hope. Well, I don't know if it will make me feel better, but it needs to be done. It would definitely be one less evil monster in the streets so either way it would be a good riddance indeed we'll keep you informed all right then have a pleasant evening and if you see daniel just i don't know i would like to see him (laughs) i haven't seen him in a few nights um isidore says of course yanina i'll let him know Thank you. Have a pleasant night as well. You too as well. Stay safe. And I will nod and go mm. back to Nastya. And you go back to Nastya. Um, who glances towards you. Just kind of shakes her head a little bit, but doesn't say anything. <laughs> Meanwhile, now. Um, you know, you would see Rahela enter the Elysium. Okay. Uh, before that, uh, you would see Diana uh, enter a bit later as well. They both head towards where Mihai was sitting. Um, Rahela sits around their house. Uh, before that, Diana, uh, with Stefania's help, also sits down visibly. They both appear to be in pain, but Diana much more visibly so. Um, and then you see Bea enter the Elysium about around the time you return mm. uh, to speak to Nastya. I will smile at Bea if I meet her eyes. Yes, um, I'll wave briefly and if the sheriff's still around I'll see whether he's available for conversation. <laughs> um, he's currently talking to Clemens. Okay. Um, but he notices you as you enter and nods his head. Mm-hmm. In which case, I will sit, but sort of keep an eye on him and see whenever he has a free moment. Um, but I'll I'll come and join uh, Yanina and Nastia. Um, is is Cornelia still here? Actually, um, she is. Yes. Oh, she just I... finished talking to the sheriff. Okay. 
In which case I will go and say good evening to her because I haven't seen her in a few nights. And, um, she says, good evening, Miss Wojniak. It's good to see you again. Good to see you here. Yes. How have you been keeping? All right, thank you. Good. <sighs> You're going to be busy for the rest of the evening? <laughs> Do you have a nice off for once? Not quite a night off, but I have mm. some time to spend here. I'm glad you're getting at least a couple of moments to yourself. <laughs> These are few and precious. Indeed. <laughs> um, I hope you are keeping well. Yes, and busy. <laughs> Aren't we always? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it is the way. <laughs> I'll not keep you too long, but it was good to see you. Likewise. Miss Wojnik. Have a pleasant night. You as well. And I head back to Yanina and Nastya. <laughs> you head back to Yanina and Nastya, and you see that she's heading towards Stefania. Okay. Um, and sits next to her, <laughs> and they start talking. Um, and you sit with Yanina. Yes. Yeah. Nastya, it's good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Trust you're well? I'm all right, thank you. Good. Yanina has been... well. She can tell you herself. Can she now? <laughs> and I smile at Nastya. <laughs> it's all right, it's nothing. She just sort of laughs it off. Um, I was just unsure if she wanted me to tell her about my conversation with Zoya <laughs> yeah, and Isidore. Yeah, I think it was, it was pretty clear it was that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Or if she wanted to talk about our relationship. <laughs> no, no. Uh, maybe not in here. <laughs> okay. Then I will just... Probably just do some small talk here and there. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so you don't mention the conversation with Zoya and Isidore, just to be clear. Okay, Not so you, just, you <laughs> do some polite small talk. Um, you see, Bea, that after some time, uh, Clements appears to be leaving. Okay. In which case, I will excuse myself and head towards the sheriff. <laughs> um. You head towards the sheriff. Um... Yanina, is there anything you want to speak to Nastya after Bea leaves, or do you just keep polite small talk? I just probably, nothing important, I guess, in the Elysium. So just yeah. like small talk, maybe talking about our work and like asking her questions about hers and her plans and just like stuff like that. Nothing too personal because I don't want to talk about personal stuff around um, Mikhail, but... <laughs> So you would notice that she is it like listens to you when you ask about her work. She she's kind of also glancing around. It's like, well, you know, I'm learning a lot from Zygmunt and how he maintains his contacts. And and she will tell you about some books she's reading on various political philosophies that he wants her to read and asking her opinion um, on it. Um, but she will be very vague about what she actually does with Zygmunt and what she actually learns when she's with him, uh, other than that, about Camarilla-related matters. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Bea. Yes. Um, you come up to the sheriff. Yes. Um, who gives you a slight bow. Miss Wolzniak, good evening. Sir. Um, I was wondering if I'd be able to have a conversation with you in private. Of course, Miss Wolzniak. Thank you. Um, I'm so far keeping my expression quite light. Um, but I think it's obvious from the fact that I want to speak to him alone that it's probably something serious. Please follow me. Thank you, sir. 
um, and he takes you um, towards the back of the Elysium mm -hmm. and through the door there and into an office, an empty one, not necessarily his, just a room where you can talk. Mm -hmm. Is this private enough or is yes. it a more private matter? <laughs> no, this is perfectly fine. Thank you, sir. Um... <sighs> Sorry. I... I've recently become aware of an issue that I don't believe is quite yet a masquerade breach, but I'm worried that if left unsupervised will become one. And I don't have the most experience with dealing with issues such as this one, so I wanted to ask your advice. Of course. Thank you, sir. Um, To begin with, I should start by saying that I have no... My memory of my life before becoming like this is entirely blank. I do not know, I did not know anything about my past until very recently. Um, I have recently become aware that apparently I had a husband and he is looking for me. And unfortunately, some of my mortal contacts, I am concerned that one of them might have attempted to be a good Samaritan and maybe try and put him in contact with me. And this is obviously not, not something that should, well, Ms. Wojniak, it depends. What is your goal here? I presume you don't want to be put in contact with him. No, sir. Um, the contacts, the person you mentioned, Yes. do they know how to contact you? Can a contact actually be established? I don't think it can, but I'm just worried that it's going to be stirring things up. I don't, I don't think he knows where I am. He shouldn't know where I am at the moment. Um, but word of mouth is a thing. <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's a way to... I don't know. Stop this from getting out of hand. Um, there's certainly are ways. I'm afraid I would need some more details. Of course, sir. Um, I will then reach into my journal and pull out the newspaper article that has been in the papers. Um, he glances at it, has a look through. Well, um, that is certainly you. There is no doubt about that. Yes. Um, I believe there's also been advertisements on the radio as well. Oh, advertisements isn't the right word, but you get my meaning. Um, the way I see it, the fact that he's looking for you isn't in and of itself a problem. People go missing all the time. Yes. People die all the time in the city. And people abandoned their loved ones more often than we'd like to think. Indeed. Do you know if he has been notified and what information was given to him? I don't know for certain yet. I wanted to speak to you first before I started putting my nose any further into it. Um, but I can certainly go and establish that. Um, from what I understand, um, he he works for some of the local community. He runs a bar over in Praga. Um, he likes putting people back in contact with their loved ones. Um, a noble pursuit, if inconvenient. Yes. In <laughs> yes. This Indeed. Um, I can certainly 
go and try and establish what has or hasn't happened yet. Um, I just wanted to make you aware before it was brought to you with something else. <laughs> of course. As I said, I'm not concerned yet. Okay. And I don't think it necessarily needs to become a problem. I can, of course, help make it even less of an issue. Um, do you know where to find your husband? Not yet. I just have a contact number to call him with information regarding me. But um, I was initially thinking of trying to tell him that I died during the war using someone else's face. But that's obviously not going to be possible if he's been informed I'm alive. <laughs> so... I'll go and establish what has been said. And if I could, mm -hmm. of course, once we have more information, send Antoni to make some things forgotten that should be forgotten. But I will need a better account of what exactly the situation is, of course, so that Antoni's time and talents are used most efficiently. Of course, sir. Um, I wouldn't want to waste anyone's time. Um, but thank you very much for listening, sir. You are a valued member of this community. Thank you, sir. And I value your contribution. I am willing to do this for you as a favour. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I will go and establish more details then. Thank you. Of course, Ms. Wozniak. If there's any other help you require. Not at this moment, thank you. And if there's any other help that you require, please let me know. And he looks you in the eyes, this sort of very serious look. Mm -hmm. And as he says, says, thank you. Yes. And, when I, and when I offered that help, that was again serious. Mm -hmm. I won't take up any more of your time then, sir. Thank you for seeing me. I hope this is something we can resolve quickly. Yes, sir. That is my hope as well. As I said, so far I don't see much of a reason for concern. But if you are able to find information on his location and what he's been told, we can certainly put the matter to rest further. Thank you. He may yet think that you perished during the war. I hope it is that, but we'll find out. Thank you. You're very welcome. Shall we get back? Yes, sir. And, and he gets the door for you, unless you throw. I will follow him back. You follow him back to the Elysium. Mm -hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Yanina, you are gossiping with Nastya. Um, is there anything else you wish to do in the meantime? Mm, probably not. I'm probably waiting for Bea to get back and to see if we have any more work. Mm. And we'll see. So, Bea. Um, as you are getting back to the Elysium uh, with the sheriff, you see the prince and Sigmund walk along the corridor, at which Lucian pauses and bows. I also bow. Uh, and lets them go first. Um, and follows quite closely. I'll follow behind less closely. <laughs> um, and he gets a door for them, uh, letting them through into the Elysium, after which he enters himself. I will follow. <laughs> um, and you see that he engages the prince in a conversation. You know, you also see the prince enter it, which few people stand up. 
Um, but they relax pretty quickly as she sort of waves them to. Uh, and you see Zygmunt go in with her and give you a and Nastya a very broad, warm smile. I will smile back at him. Um, and you better see uh, the sheriff turn to the prince and start talking with her. Um, where are you headed? I think I'm headed back to Yanina and Nastya. After trailing in after all the important people. <laughs> yes, so you see Bea trail in after the important people. I just raise my eyebrows for a bit. <laughs> Nastya also looks kind of curiously and glances to you, Yanina, but doesn't say anything. And then she says, I should probably go say hello to Zygmunt. Of course, you go. But if you. Don't be afraid to come up and say hello as well if you want to speak to him about something. And she kind of winks at you. Um, <laughs> I will do that later, mm-hmm. probably. I will see what Bea has cooked up for us tonight. <laughs> I'm scared to find out. <laughs> and then she sort of waves at you and stands up and moves towards Sigmund. I'll head over and sit back down next to you, Nina. Wow, it looked like you were seeing a lot of important people. Briefly in the corridor, yes. <laughs> and I smile there. How did it go, the sheriff? Uh, good, I would say. Um, we'll, I'll discuss it more in private, I think. But, right. <laughs> um, I just need to establish a bit more information. And then hopefully we can clear it up. Do you uh, want my help with it? I mean, that would probably be, that would be good. <laughs> of course. Um, I don't have any plans tonight. So if you want to start tonight, we can do it. That would that would be good. I think being able to deal with it quickly would be best. Um, just, I suppose, we'll need us to go back to Praga and go see my friend there. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, yes, I've kind of neglected my contacts, so <sighs> I'm you sure this is going I to be an awkward my... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I didn't see my friend, we told, from the hospital in a long time. Oh, goodness. Um, we are not the best at keeping up with our mortal f- friends. Oh, this is... Uh, there's just so much going on. <laughs> yeah, they're busy people. Indeed. So, do you, do you want to hang out here for a moment? Or are we ready to go? Um, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Uh, do you have anything else you need to discuss with anyone? No, I guess not. I glance at Magdalena and... I remember that she's usually here, so mm-hmm. I think I can... You're not wanting to update Sigmund on any of your work at all? Uh, probably later. Okay. Around he this time, wait. before you leave, <laughs> you do see that Mihail stands up. And he walks to the piano at the Elysium. And sits down, and it's sort of happening during your conversation mm-hmm. as you're trying okay. to decide whether to leave right now or not. Mm-hmm. And he starts playing a sad, mournful tune, familiar tune that you heard many times here at the Elysium. And you recognize it as Bruno's composition and his music. And he plays it very well, smoothly, okay. without hesitation. I guess when we were going up, if I heard him play and it reminded me of Bruno, I guess I will sit back down and just, mm-hmm. I guess we listen for a moment. What runs through your head, Yanina, as you hear this? I guess memories of Bruno 
with him playing. And the few conversations with him that I had. And I guess mm -hmm. a wave of grief and pity that he's not here anymore. A new bell. Um, well, I suppose my conversation with Rahella from earlier is playing through my head. And my eyes sort of glance to her briefly. Um, and you see that she is looking at Mihail and looking around the room, like observing everyone in the mm -hmm. Elysium. Do you follow her gaze? Um, I think I will, yes. And then you do see um, that hearing the music, um, people are looking uncomfortable mostly. They're looking to Mihail and to the prince. You see Cornelia leans towards Stefania and Stefania says something to her very quietly. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, Nina, if you're looking around, you obviously see this as well. I probably not. Don't, yeah, don't no, look around. I probably watch, like, Mikhail. And mm. I probably concentrate oh. on him. Um, and Mikhail is playing. Focused entirely on the music. With very serious expression. But Bea, you do see. As the music starts playing, you see Isidore is staring, not at either of the two everyone else is looking at, but mm. at his sire, Zygmunt. And he's looking visibly angry and disgusted. And then he turns around and leaves. And Zoya uh, follows after him. As Zygmunt turns to say something to Nastya. And around this time, Yanina, you see Mihail's eyes shoot to the side. Um, do you follow to see who he's looking at? Yes. Uh, so you see him exchange a quick glance with Nina, who's looking at him with a certain question on her face, and he slightly nods his head. And then she follows after Isidore and Zoya. And then Mihail goes back to playing. And he plays the same melody you heard here many times before. And then he finishes. And he closes the piano. And there's absolute silence. No one is talking right now. Janina was about to. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he walks up front of the prince and he bows and she's just looking straight at him uh, with controlled expression but clearly hiding Can I try a lot of emotion that absolutely works. absolutely I'm also kind of intrigued oh. by this <laughs> perception and empathy yeah but difficulty the way, six how badly i roll <laughs> okay i didn't roll I have five right. successes, that's not bad. That's how many? That's the best roll I had, five. Well, let's see how she does. Okay, it's better than I rolled. Um, will insightful or hidden pain apply? <laughs> yes, insightful will apply. Uh, how many do you have? Seven. <laughs> so, Yanina, you actually don't see much beyond her expression. <laughs> Okay. Um, have a six here, but you bear do see irritation as a first sort of emotion that is barely hidden, barely controlled. Um, and you see one success over her. You do see some discomfort beyond this as well. Okay. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> and Mihail finishes his bow and returns to his seat. Uh, he just loves to st stare the drama. 
where <laughs> he's a Toreador. <laughs> he sits Sorry. down and uh, starts talking to Stefania, uh, asking how he did, and then just leans towards her, start talking to her. Okay. Did I get anything from him while seeing that exchange? Uh, roll your perception and empathy again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, or, yeah, I think, yeah, that's what you get from him. Uh, so we'll see. So he, yeah. Well, bad news, because I don't think that's nearly as good as before. Uh, what did you get? Yeah, that's unfortunately due to the ones, that would only be three successes. Well, he didn't roll very well. Um, so you don't get, like, you don't get this kind of amazing insight that you sometimes no. get. But you do get um, certain... You get absolute calm. Mm -hmm. And you get certain, like, that he is... When he's playing, there is regret there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is some pain there. Uh, but you see that the, his moves are also very deliberate and very calculated. Mm -hmm. And where well, a lot of his attention is on the music, a lot of his attention was on the whole room throughout him playing. Good to know. <laughs> I make eye contact with the Nina with slightly raised eyebrows. <laughs> With whom? With Yanina. Yanina, yes. Yeah. I look at her and then I guess we get up and leave. <laughs> and you leave the Elysium, having witnessed that situation. Sure did. <laughs> and I think this is a good moment for a break. Um, thank you all so much for watching. We will be back in about 15 minutes. Please stay with us to see what Bea and Yanina will get up to next. We'll see you after the break. And welcome back, everyone. Thank you for sticking with us. Um, let's dive right back in as Bea and Yanina are leaving the Elysium uh, after having some conversations there and witnessing a scene, uh, a bit tense scene, uh, but they didn't stay to see what follows, they just left. <laughs> uh, well, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he wanted to <laughs> stir up some drama. Well, I think he successfully did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's certainly mm. an interesting person. Yes. Um, I prefer to witness him from a distance. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. Mm. But, he's... well, he played well. He played beautifully um, and antagonized the prince in the process, so... I guess that was the intention. Potentially. Mm. There's also something between him and um, Nina, but it wasn't quite clear what that was. Um, I mean, it seemed like she was asking his permission to go after mm. her man. Yes. Well, that's the dynamic, I guess, they have between each other. <sighs> Wonderful. So, how did things go with the sheriff? Good. Um, he will offer me some aid in return for a favour. Um, so, I need to go and get more information about what has been told and what hasn't. Um, I've also got a note that Roman offered help and I do want to ask if he'd be willing to teach me um, 
how to change up my look, so to speak. Oh, all right. Um, <sighs> but I don't think it's time, I suppose. Um, the location that Roman gave me, was that closer to the Praga district or further away? It's not very far from here. It's, well, it's not on the way to Praga district because there's not, there's no bridge to lead you. It's actually, it's kind of opposite side right. of this Tula River from Praga district, okay. directly opposite. Right. Um, and you have to go a little bit around to get to the bridge. Okay. Um, but it's not far from Hotel Bristol at okay. all. Um, so you could go there fairly quickly. Uh, it's 10 minutes walk tops. Okay. Um, and you could try to find a shortcut for finding a boat or something to cross the river, but that's obviously risky. There's also a railway bridge you could try to go to and oh. cross through there. You remember that. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> Which would be a shorter way from there than going back, but it's not the big detour. Okay. Um, would you be up for paying Roman a brief visit? Of course. I always love to see him. Yes. Um, I'll see if I can speak to him about it. Um, if he's in. <laughs> of course. Let's go. Okay. And you leave. Hotel Bristol. Anything you wish to discuss on the way? Mm. I probably mention the fact that I talked with Isidore and Zoya. Ah, right. <laughs> what about? Uh, I want to help them. Well, I offered help and they seem to want me to help if I want to, to helping getting rid of one of the Sabbat that killed Zoya's child. Okay. But don't worry, you don't have to, like, do anything. <laughs> I offered help for myself. I recognize that, but it, it does seem incredibly risky. Ah, oh, well, I also feel incredibly guilty and I feel it's right and I don't want to leave them alone to it. I mean, it seems only right that I will help them. I know that you say that I don't have to help you, but... I don't think I can sit and sit back at Elysium and worry about whether or not you're going to survive. I'm sure I'm going to be fine. I mean, I'm sure they would not say no to your help, but I don't really want you to drag you into it unless you really like want to, because, I mean... I offered help for myself, and you already are helping with Dominic, and, you know, I just don't want you to feel that you have to help, because I'm going. I promise I'm gonna be as safe as I possibly can be, and let the more experienced ones to take the lead. Really? I guess yes, because I I don't want to die by so bad. Fair enough. I now have things to look forward to. Things. Yeah, I didn't have time to tell you, but I. Me and Nastya, I guess we are a couple now. I'm happy that you've allowed some happiness into your life. I certainly feel more calmer, but, but I mean, 
I guess it has two sides because now I worry about her even more. <laughs> but I also feel like I have something to live for. Not that I didn't have before. I have you, but I don't know. It's different a bit. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. Well, if you can, I'd appreciate it. How How is it different? I don't know. It's... Because with you, I I know you want me to feel safe. Mm-hmm. And I want you to be safe. But with Nastya, it's also... I don't know. As if I... It fulfills me differently. Okay. I, I would think about how to explain it. But right now, I... <laughs> don't have the right words. That's fair. Sorry for putting that on you. you. <laughs> All the same, just differently. You're my sister. Yes. That's fair. I guess I'm just... Now that I'm aware I apparently had a husband, I guess I'm just <laughs> curious as to what that is. <laughs> I mean, I guess... Except, like, physical attraction, the love is just the same for you as for Nastya. You want the person to be safe and you want them happy and they make you happy, I guess. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, that was the big news. (laughs) (sighs) Explosives and romance, what a combination. <laughs> yeah, I'm living the Bruja life. <laughs> is that what it is now? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> oh dear. Uh... And you know, I'm not really experienced in relationships. I never really had a relationship. Well, I don't remember ever extent. having one, so, well, I well, guess we're in the same Somehow <laughs> you got married. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> I would really like to, I mean, I can't imagine you right now getting married. <laughs> but, I mean, um, it happened, so. I, I suppose it's it. I don't, I don't know if I've discussed this before. I... Looking at who I was when I was alive, it feels almost like looking at another person. I I get that when you don't remember your past and you don't have the memories tied to feelings. It must be difficult to feel anything for this man. Pretty much. And I don't know. I don't even know if I have the same personality is before I don't know would I would I be the same person back then I I don't know um, well I guess we will never know but if it's anything I love the person that you are no thank you I appreciate that <sighs> I feel like every time I just get to accepting that I'm comfortable with not knowing things about my past. Something just comes from (laughs) stage left. It looks like that. (laughs) This barrels me over. I hope we can figure this out and you can, can move on and don't be bothered by your past. At least. Um, I suppose I hope that he can move on as well. He must have been important to me at some point, so I don't have any ill will towards him. Of course, that's understandable. I I really hope this situation will be as painless for him as for you. Well, he misses the old me, I suppose, and I think there's going to be pain wrapped up in there no matter what. Yes. I, but I guess a lot of people during the war are going through this, so 
he must have the support and understanding of other people going through the same thing. Well, I can't really speculate, I'm afraid. Yeah, let's, let's just hope we can bring him peace. That would be good. And you got, quite quickly, to what's left of St. Anna's Church near the old town of Warsaw. Mm -hmm. In the old town of Warsaw, actually. Okay. Um, right next to its main square. Um, it used to be a nice, richly decorated building, but now the roof is broken. Um, and it looks mostly empty as you approach. Mm -hmm. I'm mostly going to be hanging about outside because I was told not to enter. I've got that note in my journal. Um, and I'll let Yanina know as such. Okay. That, um, I suppose... Is, is this a sort of street where it'd be weird for us to be standing waiting for someone? Like if it's completely ruined or would this be? Um, there's quite a lot of ruin around, but there are people walking past. There are occasionally people stopping um, for a smoke. There are some people chatting. It's not going to be massively weird. Some people okay. might be curious, That's fine. Um, but it is a church. You can see some people making a sign of a cross as they walk past and stopping and... Mm -hmm. uh, saying a prayer and then continuing on. Okay. Um, and you okay. wait for a moment. Um, well, uh, perception and alertness, both of you, with difficulty mm -hmm. seven. I'm looking to see if there's anyone concealed yeah. with yeah. obfuscate. Oh, then that will be another roll, but... Yep, that's uh, fine. We'll so, that. awareness, oh. uh, alertness first. Uh, yeah. What was the difficulty? Uh, difficulty seven. Okay, I have success of eight and ten. Okay. Um, I have a ten and a seven. Okay. And bear have your perception and awareness with difficulty okay. seven. Making sure I had the right number of dice there. <laughs> okay. Um... I've got a 10 and three eights. You don't see anyone okay. obfuscated. You don't think there is one, anyone in here, at least not anyone you can see. Yeah. Are, are um, better than me at doing this? Or no, they're just not there? <laughs> or they're just not there. Uh, but you do notice as you are glancing around, um, you notice few uh, rats scattered across uh, the street and into the church and over the ruins there. Mm. Um, you do see, sitting on part of a ruined wall, a cat looking at you. And you also see, inside the church, um, there's a man sleeping there. Okay. Or at least laying there. Well, I was told not to enter, so I'm not approaching him. <laughs> um, I watch the cat for a little moment. Um, keep an eye on... As I see the rats enter the building, I presume that's at least some sort of an alert system. <laughs> um, and the cat jumps away and goes into the church after a while as well. Fair enough. Um, and as you keep waiting... Um, you do hear footsteps coming out, mm -hmm. uh, and you see someone shake the man awake, and he jumps out and looks, and the person just points uh, to you, okay. and the man just sort of <sighs> explaining that uh, he fell asleep, he, he wasn't quite... Mm -hmm. I don't, he doesn't know how it happened. He, he sort of moves towards you. Okay. Quickly. Fair enough. I will have slightly nodded my head to whoever was pointing at us <laughs> in an acknowledgement. Um, and the person walks away. Okay. Um, and we'll just wait patiently. And he comes up. <laughs> May I help you? Good evening. 
Maybe you can. I'm looking for a man called Roman. Have you, have you seen him? Let me ask. Thank you. And he um, walks inside the church and disappears behind a wall. And you wait there for mm-hmm. a moment. Um, and then you hear footsteps come out again, and the man reappears. Uh, he has a very defensive posture now. Okay. Please follow me. Thank you. You yeah. hold my hand and follow. I'll try and give him a comforting smile, but otherwise I'll just follow him. Um, and he leads you inside the church. Um, and you see there is an entrance to the crypt uh, that appears to be intact. Um, although most of the roof has collapsed and so there is a lot of rubble around in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, but he doesn't lead you towards the entrance to the crypts. He leads you further towards um, another area of the church, the area that serves for the priests to get ready, um, that appears to be less damaged. Mm-hmm. And he opens the door and comes inside. Well, let's you come inside and Mm -hmm. gestures for you to come in. Someone Mm -hmm. wishes to speak with you. Um. And you hear a voice from inside. Um, And you see there's a little bit of light there. There is a lamp um, that has been put um, on slightly damaged desk there. Um, And you hear a voice saying... Come inside. Enter. I follow. And the man just closes the door. But you don't hear him moving away. Okay. And as you step in, you see in the light sitting at the desk. Well, standing up now to sort of lean on it towards you. Um, An Osferatu woman. A lanky one with elongated limbs. Proportion of her body, slightly off, slightly shifted. You see some um, long, grey, dry-looking, broken hair uh, from just at the back of her head, falling down onto her shoulders. Um, And as you come closer, you see that she has no eyebrows and no eyelashes, and her skin... uh, looks dried out and it's cracking in places, twisted as it cracks. Uh, And she leans across the desk towards you. What the fuck are you doing here? And what the fuck do you want with my child? Ah, um, good evening. Um... I'm Beatrice of Glenock Cavian. I was looking to speak with Roman. He told me that I could find him here. Did he now? Well, I'll have to have a chat with him, clearly. My apologies, I didn't mean to intrude. You don't have to put on this facade here. I know who you are, he talked about you. What do you want with him? The question still stands. He offered his aid with a personal matter. Um, I was looking to see whether he would have the time to give me some advice. Mm. She sort of smiles and you see that she is uh, missing quite a bit of teeth. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the ones she has left are kind of brownish and a bit disfigured as well. 
<laughs> Must be a man with a lot of free time to offer his help so freely. In unrelated matters, the matters that are mystery to me. I apologize if I've caused any inconvenience. I said you can drop it here. I don't care for whatever it is you're doing. Whatever it is I'm doing is, I'm afraid, just my way. <laughs> what help do you require then? What do you hope my Roman to do for you? I was hoping that he could advise me in how to change my look. He is skilled in it, and I'm looking to learn. How are you feeling right now, Belle? Um, a little bit like I've just gotten a friend in trouble with their parents. <laughs> um, um, a little put on the spot, but I'm... and. A little uncertain of how to interact with her if not being polite because that's just how I am. Um, so I, I'm i now not entirely certain how to proceed and that that is a little stressful but I'm I'm not upset I'm just trying to figure out how best to um, smooth things over I guess. <laughs> Um, and, and I'm not trying to be dishonest with her or anything. No. Oh. Um, uh, put your perception and empathy. Okay. Uh, is my difficulty six? Your difficulty is six, yes. Okay. Uh, then that would be five successes. Five successes. Um. Nope. Oh no, actually yes, there's Ooh. one here. Um, so you do see that um, well, she acts very forward and very mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't necessarily a hostility there, more a certain curiosity, certain assessment of you mm -hmm. happening. That's fair. Um, how about you, Anina? How do you act? What do you do? Do you say anything? I probably just like introduce myself when Bea introduced herself, and then I just let Bea ask questions because it's like it, it's her <laughs> her quest. <laughs> but I'm just like I'm being fairly relaxed, especially when she said that we can like drop the act, so I. <laughs> I'm fine with it. <laughs> so I'm just being my. I'm just. You're like, more comfortable. I'm not saying anything, but I'm. I'm just standing and watching the two of them exchange <laughs> information. Um, sort of looks to you for a moment when you said that you look to change your appearance. And then nods her head and looks to you, Yanina. And you, what is your personal matter? Well, I'm here as an emotional support. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I miss Roman. I wanted to see him. Emotional support. I try and keep my face a poker face. <laughs> Scary to come see Big Ugly Nosferatu. No. And she kind of smiles as she says that. Yeah. More scary the things that are out on the street. And you see a certain, like, acknowledgement of that and certain uh, appreciation of that appraisal. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she knows her head. 
It is it is. Scary things lurking around. Roman isn't here right now. He might be busy for the next few nights. Okay. Thank you. For but I'll send him to Elysium in due course. Thank you very much. And again, I'm sorry to have intruded. <laughs> and I promise I'm not trying to put on a face for that. <laughs> we are as we are. Indeed. We'll not take up any more of your time then. Before you go. Of course. Roman obviously decided it. It is wise and proper to tell you where to find him. Don't share that knowledge around. Of if course some not. random kindred keeps sniffing around, I will know who it came from. Understood. And be careful. Thank you. I wish you well. And she knows her head and looks at you all the way as you back. You almost feel her gaze on your back. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you feel there's no hostility there as such. Well, then I think that interaction went as good as it could have. <laughs> And we will leave. <laughs> and you leave. Yeah. And the man walks you mm -hmm. to the exit from the church. And I will smile at him and say thank you as we depart. <laughs> I'll sun up my head and say goodbye to him. Have a pleasant night. Yeah, you as well. And turn around and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> once we are a distance away. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll glance around again and see whether anyone's following us invisibly, <laughs> but I might not know. And just go. No one that I'm... you can see. No one that I can see. And just say to you, know, I hope I haven't just got Roman into trouble. <laughs> He's just gonna be grounded for a few weeks. Oh, I feel really bad. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <sighs> so we finally met the magnificent walls. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Yeah. Well, she didn't seem too, too scary. <laughs> I mean, for kindred standards. I'm sure From... she's very capable of being scary. <laughs> but yeah. I respect her a lot. <laughs> A different sort of social interaction than how I'm used to. So. Yeah, it must be harder for you. <laughs> I guess I'm not very good I at feel more. Yeah. <laughs> I feel more, more comfortable with people like her. <laughs> and Zygmunt, who let me be myself. <sighs> just, I'm just... I'm, I'm I know. Light. <laughs> I know. I don't know just, how to drop that. <laughs> it's just who you are. Uh, oh well. <sighs> anyway, we should. Yeah. So, how how do you want to proceed now? Do you want to go to carry on as carry on as we were going to otherwise? Okay. Um, right. Whatever Roman could help me with, I can wait. Okay. Not a matter of urgency. Right. When we are going uh, to Praga district, I'm gonna look for someone to feed on on the way. I want to keep myself fed up. I might also do the same because I'm not quite very low on blood, but I'm getting there. <laughs> no, I'm that's... well, and I want to keep it that way. With an alertness from both of you. Difficulty seven. 
<sighs> I have three three successes. Well, thank God you do because I have none. <laughs> but I, you don't seem to yeah. find <laughs> anyone really. Um, but yeah, Nina, as you already have crossed um, Poniatowski Bridge, and you're walking um, along a park um, that uh, is on your right as you walk towards Praga district, um, you do see um, a man, fairly young man, uh, walking through the park, clearly taking a shortcut, holding a newspaper under his arm and smoking. All right. Uh, am I behind him? Well, he's kind of to the side. Okay. He's in the park. You, you're mm -hmm. not. He's not very far from you, uh, but you would have to kind of cut okay. across the park to get to him. Okay, I will do that, and I will tell Bea before I go. That <laughs> I think it should be all right that I feel very well fed, mm -hmm. and hopefully there shouldn't be any problems. But okay. just keep an eye out. I will do, <laughs> <laughs> and then I will stalk him and then <laughs> jump on him. <laughs> so you want to sneak up on him? Yeah. Um, just roll your um, decks and stealth and you can add your uh, celerity dice. Well, the number of uh, celerity you have to it, which I think is two. Yeah. While she's doing that, I'll find a tree to stand behind with obfuscate. <laughs> okay. No problem I, at all. What was the difficulty? Um, the difficulty is six. Okay, then I have one, two, three, four, five successes. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, the man like doesn't see you at all. Um, he appears to be very deep in thoughts. He doesn't even like flinch as you like he almost doesn't first realize what is happening when you grab him. Uh, and you can easily bite into his neck. And I How will much? take two. Yeah, two. Um, I'm a good girl. Yes. And you drink and you take as much as you want and you are absolutely in control. Mm. Um, it's a good feeling. There are, you for a moment become more acutely aware of your wounds as you're feeding, um, but you are controlling yourself. It's, it's nowhere near overwhelming feeling. And then you uh, move away from the man who is dazed in your arms. And I just changed, there. I just like let go of him and as, you know, he starts to, mm. like, I don't, he's unconscious, so I just let him go and just turn ar around and start to walk in the, walk in the other direction. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like he, you will hear a groan sort of coming from him when you're some distance away, you have, you don't think he realized what exactly has happened at all. And there's a big smile on my face when I meet Bea, <laughs> like, look at me, <laughs> I did well. <laughs> yes, I'll step out from behind the tree and just walk walk along beside her. <laughs> yes, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> yeah, staying on top of things. <laughs> yes, you see, I'm growing a relationship, <laughs> uh, better feeding habits. You're growing up. Great. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. If we see someone else, we can. You wanted to also feed, so I will keep my eyes out. Thank you. Um, do you want to search again? If the, yes, please. Yeah, I will do it the same. That will be difficulty help. eight this time. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have one success. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I shouldn't be so excited for this. <laughs> I have one, two, three successes. Two eights and one ten. No problem. Uh, so you Nina, you want to sit first, but Bea, you also do independently. Uh, that's already as you are uh, in the Praga district, navigating um, the streets there, the buildings there are much less destroyed. The um, district has been far less damaged than the other, the side of the city on the other side of the river. Um, and you do see um, a woman just walking uh, across 
one of the narrower streets on her own. She slips a little bit on the ice, um, walking fairly slowly. Okay. Um, so it's a quiet street. Yes, yes. There's no one else around. In which case, I'll let Tamina know that I'm using my usual technique and will find a spot to cloak myself and mm -hmm. sneak up on her. You can absolutely do that. And with obfuscate, I think, because she's trying to keep balance, you can definitely find a moment to sort mm -hmm. of uh, grab her and reach for her neck. Mm -hmm. And How much blood do you have right now? Two, four, six. That's all right. Then just at the edge. <laughs> just at the edge. Mm. So you start drinking. Yes. And how much do you take? Two. Two. Um, we are good girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we've so just drunk two people. We're not that good. <laughs> Holding yes. the woman. Then you finish controlling yourself, but feeling. Like you almost would like to take more. Um, you close the wound on her neck and you're not quite necessarily strong enough to hold her as she starts slipping on the ice, but you place her there uh, as comfortably as can be. Mm -hmm. And go back to join you, Nina, and carry on. <laughs> and you meet up and carry on towards Val, called Praga after the district. Yes. Um, and you um, remember, at least you and Nina remember, but there is. A, so you were going to say something, Faye? Um, it's just I was going to discuss something with you, Nina, on the way, but that's okay. fine. I was just going to say there's a certain familiarity to the district. Uh, and I remember it clearly that you lived here. Yes. Um, I guess some memories of Mara. Absolutely. You lived here with Mara. And I remember the days when we were just the four of us. And how things changed. She's not here anymore. And that we are integrated with the Camarilla. While we're walking, um, I'm not entirely sure how this conversation is going to go. All right. Um, I've also got a note that people have been asking about us because there was a murder at our flat. All right. So this might be something we want to be cautious about. Okay. All right. I'm almost tempted to try and poke my head in at the old place and see whether it's being cleaned up or see whatever I can. I'd love to. <laughs> well, someone might have moved in, to be fair. So. Yeah, but, but we can check once okay. we're here. Since we're here. Yeah. I can go up and take a look first while hidden, and if there's nobody in, then I can let you know and I can take a okay. look. Okay, that's a great idea. Might, might as well be sensible about it. <laughs> you always are. <laughs> I try. You're polite and sensible. <laughs> and you're explosive and romantic. <laughs> I guess. Um, and you... Look up, bear, towards a uh, partially bombed out building yes. where we used to live, where some flats were still intact, the top of a building ruined. And as you come up, you do see there's lights in the windows of both the basement where you used to live and the uh, flat upstairs from you, where your neighbor used to live, your neighbors. I think I don't really remember the neighbors. Mm, no. But I do, 
I recognize the basement as I see it um, and well hidden. I will look in the window if I can, if there's not the curtains up or anything. Um, um, no, not quite. I mean, there's some curtains, but you can kind of peek through crack yeah. in them. Yeah. Uh, it's not very well covered. Yeah. Um, and you do see uh, inside, um, first you see um, a few, three children sitting on a carpet, uh, sort of dirty carpeting. Um, one is reading a book, another are two are fighting over some wooden toy. One of them, the youngest one, starts crying. Um, and you hear someone uh, calling, hey, what's going on there? And you see uh, a man come up and uh, start taking care of that. I think I stop for a little longer and just kind of watch it with this sort of fond amusement of just seeing a family. Um, and then I'll turn and head back to you, Nina. Um, it does look as though they've, um, and you've, a family has moved in. Um, I'm glad that it's not gone to waste, I suppose. Yeah. Hopefully they're gonna have some good memories there. Hopefully better, better than... Anyway, and I pause, so looking back at the building, feeling like there should be someone else here, but I can't quite place my finger on it. Anyway. Are you thinking about Mara? Our yeah. sister? Yes, I think I am. Do you remember her? Now that you mention her, some things come back. It's quite vague. I... She was a Nosferatu actress. She was very dramatic. I think I remember the radio was playing and she was dancing. Yes, she was a good dancer. Thank you for reminding me. I miss her. I I feel an emptiness where she should be. Yes. Sorry, my, my kids <laughs> licking my I ear. See that. Yeah. <laughs> and just hearing the purring, it's delightful. <laughs> and I I guess it's nice to think about her from time to time. I make sure to remind remind you. Thank you. It, the thing that hurts the most is not being able to hold on to those that aren't here anymore. Yes, that's that's definitely something. That's. <sighs> Probably same for us as it is for mortals. I just can't even remember them well. Um, I'm sorry. And I will start describing Mara to Bea, like her physical appearance, her horns, her hair, her skin, the dresses that she used to wear, some of the things that she said, some funny things that she did. Thank you. Of course. Well, I suppose we now need to go deal with the other consequences of my not remembering things. Yes. Let's go. I guess it's nice we went here. Remind, reminded ourselves of our past. And trip through memory lane. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Now we are going to deal with your memory lane. <sighs> it's going to be okay. I 
open my book and start going through everything I can find about my friend from the bar because <laughs> I realize it's been a while and I barely remember him. <laughs> uh, you would have some notes that he's called Andre. He's somewhat like community organizer. He runs this bar. He helps people out a lot. Um, he is very friendly, open, always was happy. Um, to share information, to connect people. Um, he, um, you would probably have it written that he really wanted to create uh, a community here in the Praga district where people can start rebuilding and feel safe again. Yeah. He seems like a good man. Well. Anyway, head towards Braga. <laughs> um, you see the bar, and Yanina, you see it hasn't really changed much. Um, it's uh, There's still a few people standing outside, few with glasses, few smoking. And there's clearly um, a vibe that they just didn't really fit inside or felt a little bit unwell. Most people are trying to squeeze inside because it is fairly cold right now. <laughs> um, and um, there is a crowd inside. Mm -hmm. As you come closer, you can smell the cigarette smoke, some cooked food, some alcohol. Well, this is at least better than our previous mm -hmm. bar experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it has bar, much more bar of hopping. a. They're still drunk people, but Yanina. it's yes. it's much more mixed crowd, and yeah. it has much more of this community atmosphere. Yeah. You know, there's dinners cooked for people. Yeah, um, I think as we're approaching, and I'm realizing sort of how packed it is inside, I'm starting to feel a little nervous. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to sort of mentally steel myself for having to squeeze through people. <laughs> Um, which I'm not looking forward to. Are there any other feelings, uh, thoughts stirred up by your conversation about Mara or what you're about to discuss right now? Oh God, um, there's this feeling of the old grief for Mara that gets brought back up again. It's sort of faint because I haven't recalled her properly myself. Um, but there is this feeling of missing, of someone missing who should be with us and that sort of longing to have them back. Um, I'm also really nervous about this conversation with Andre. Um, I'm, I'm worried in case there's been more learned about what happened at our flat than I'm going to be able to uh, brush off easily. Um, I'm also starting to get a bit worried for what he has or hasn't told anyone. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I'm just hoping that this can go smoothly. And you, Anina, what's running through your head? What are you thinking about being back in this district, back in the places you recognize very well? Yeah, well, I guess there's like nostalgia and memories flooding back. Mm. And like mostly, I guess, pleasant, except like the how it ended. Then I... There's a lot of like good memories, I guess, mm -hmm. in this place. More simpler lives we lived <laughs> without Camarilla, <laughs> without uh -huh. Sabat. <laughs> well, <laughs> mm -hmm. well, before we, less. <laughs> yeah. before um, we found out about them. <laughs> yes, these were better times, but I think you would remember. The, the, I think last time you were in Bar Praga, you wanted to ask about your upstairs neighbor Pavel. 
who was going through something, wanting to help him and his family. Yeah, well, yeah, that's not a pleasant no. <laughs> memory. It's not the only memory, it's just something that would be yeah. in your head. I definitely think about Pavel and think how, like, when it went downhill for me. <laughs> Things all went wrong. Yeah. Do you enter the bar? I think there's a brief moment at the door where I kind of pause, try and will... steal myself for all the people. <laughs> if I see the struggling, I probably... <laughs> I probably reach for the door and open it. Oh, for the... <laughs> all right. <laughs> Garrus is making himself known. Absolutely. <laughs> He was sleeping the whole day and now he's... Yeah, now it's time for getting mischief. Up. <laughs> getting him he paid. doesn't know that he's going to have a friend in two days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, seeing you, Nina, open the door, I'll sort of smile at her gratefully and try and <laughs> follow behind her, <laughs> using her as kind of a... <laughs> yeah, I will. I'm, I guess I know how Bev feels about crowds, so I probably... <laughs> Stay like first and try to make space and let her follow behind me. Um, you do that, and um, you don't have much difficulty doing that. People will, as much as they can, try yeah. to move out of your way. They yeah. might sometimes not notice, and then Nina then kind of uh, pokes them, and they <laughs> kind of make space. Sorry. You still <laughs> rush up against some people purely because how, of how crowded it is, yeah. and it isn't really possible to avoid yeah. touch. Uh, but no one is making any comments. You notice that some people look at you kind of curiously, mm. at both of you, but they don't really say anything. That's fine. Uh, and at some point, uh, Yanina, you would notice first, uh, men behind the counter, Andre, um, um, look at you and his face, just kind of, there's a bit of a shock and then <laughs> smile. Uh, and he's clearly looking and then notices Bea and then comes up from behind the counter. And he's just like, Bea. Yanina, oh my god, I can't believe this. Come, come, you. come. And he kind of gestures and uh, says something to some people and yeah. explains and end up making this quite broad gestures. And they kind of leave you to yeah. spaces at the counter. Uh, and they stand up. Uh, <laughs> one of them kind of just looks like, good to see you, safe. Thank you. Uh, Thank and so then much. they move away. Yes. Oh, Andre, it's so good to see you. I'm so sorry. It's been ages. I wasn't meaning to completely. No, oh, I'm. I'm just disappear. glad to see you safe, and I hoped you might show up. How, how is your husband? Oh goodness. Um, I'm actually. I only found out about that recently. I didn't actually know he was alive. So, um, I'm going to yeah, make but... a call later this evening. He kind of looks very perplexed at it. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I, I wasn't sure if I should, but I, I, I did decide that men should at least know you're alive. Right. But I was told you've already met. I thought you might show up because I left my, well, I, I left the message that I called and I thought maybe you'll, well, remember old friend. <laughs> of course. That... But that's... I... Okay. <laughs> um, there might have been some miscommunication somewhere. Um, right. Hmm. Tell you what, let me at least buy a drink, because it's been a while. Um, oh, it's... it's on me. What do you want? Oh, thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll order something that's pretty cheap, because <laughs> I don't want to cost him massive money. Uh, Yanina? <laughs> I will have the same, as usual. <laughs> And he brings you yeah. um, to glass sauce. Yeah. Uh, would you like something to eat? We still no. have some dumplings left. No. Oh, that sounds yeah, amazing, dinner. but we've just eaten. Um, yeah. But thank you so much. Um, it's it's so good to see you again. Um, well, that's... That's very, that's very strange. Um, 
Well, I don't think he would confuse his wife. I, I would hope not. <laughs> um, and Maybe I got well, something wrong, but no, that's what they said. Well, well they are talking. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> finish, finish, finish. Yeah, that's, no, he yeah. kind of pauses yeah. thinking. Well, I'll, I'll I'll make a phone call later and try and establish what's happened. <laughs> it could be there was some miscommunication somewhere. And then he kind of calls his wife, my dear. <laughs> Did they get it wrong? They said that I, they already met her husband, right? When I called. that That's what I said. That's what I told you. And it's like, uh, yes, that, that's what you said, I think. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm rather busy. No um, worries. No worries. And she goes back to the kitchen. Okay. The, at this point, the alarm bells are starting to go off in my head. I think Janina at this, like, I think she remembers Irmina. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think alarm bells go in her head as mm. well. <laughs> because that's what she worried about. Yeah. For Bea, I've, I've not quite put Irmina to the front of my mind, but there's certainly... There's a, at first a little part of me going, did I speak to him and forget about it? That seems unlikely. I feel like I'd have written that down. Um, uh, but then there's also this feeling like something's wrong. Something is wrong here. <laughs> um. I'm just sort of continuous talking. Well, I mm. called him yesterday and... Right. Or was it the day before, maybe? Oh, sorry, a lot happens here. Yes, um, you're so busy all the time. <laughs> but um, I could call again and ask what that's about and tell them. Like, no, no, not at all. Um, I was going to call them anyway. Um, so don't don't you worry about it. I'll 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 try and clear that up. <laughs> um, well, but thank you for all your help, Andre, and thank you for caring. <laughs> Yeah, um, he looks kind of confused. Yeah. Um, uh, could I use passion to try and dampen some of his confusion? <laughs> or at least some of the... You can, but the you know it won't affect his memory. Yes, so I do if know he will be what he will be like less... Yeah. Uh, well, it will dampen some emotion, generally the yeah. main emotion that he's feeling. Yeah. I just, oh. I want for this conversation to go smoothly. <laughs> um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Yeah. Uh, that will be your uh, charisma and empathy with difficulty eight. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me, because God, it's been a while since I last did this. <laughs> yeah. Whoop. Well, um, that was me th throwing dice everywhere. Um, that is three successes. Three successes. So he kind of looks at you and is like, well, I, I suppose you'll find out. It's Yes. I, I'm sorry if I'm too nosy. <laughs> Not to worry, dear. Um, thank you for looking out for me. Um, yes. I... But have things been here? It's been so long since I was last here and I try and move the conversation. Well, you on. know. Uh... And he looks generally a little bit like some of this eagerness in him. Yeah. All good kind of dampened. Yeah. Uh, and he, he seems more tired now, <laughs> but not unfriendly. Yeah, just, yeah, absolutely. This comes to the forefront. That's fair. <laughs> um, life is hard. Some people get arrested by the militia for anti-state activities or whatever anti-communist subversion. I shouldn't really talk about that loudly. Although I trust everyone here right now. So yeah, it's a different I, shade of dictatorship, I suppose, now. I'd like to roll self-control so I can sort of pat him on the arm. Difficulty seven. Okay. Um, I am not able to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you want to, but you can't quite. 
especially remembering having just brushed against some people yeah. and occasionally someone still brushes against you as they come up to the bar yeah. not necessarily that they mean to yeah. but just accidentally you can't handle more touch right now thank you so yeah i sat there wanting to comfort him but not quite knowing how to um and he continues you know some people uh, still some murders happening what, what what happened with you then at your you disappeared around the time when this boy killed his family uh, he and Nina I remember you tried to help him I'm, I'm sorry it ended like this I it's um yes we've been trying to not to worry people but yes we unfortunately came across some of that and left quickly we didn't feel safe I understand and I sort of let this sort of more haggard traumatised mm. expression come onto my face and try and play it off that um, that A I remember <laughs> um where is your... Didn't you have one more sister? Yes, yes. She's she's back at home with mother. I say. Um, Roll! Manipulation and after few. Sure. <laughs> I wanted to say she... She she's she moved on or did she moved but I, <laughs> as I hear like Belle say this I just nod and smile. Uh, does misdirection come into this? It could do, yeah. Okay. Was this difficulty six? Yes. Um, I have two tens, so that's four and two sixes, so six. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, he, he just nods to this. I'm glad you all were safe. It was, well, they just said <laughs> yeah. about Pavel and what he did, and I was... Wondering what happened with you. I thought maybe you had trouble with the state as well. Well, we had a lot of bureaucracy to deal with and trying to find a new place to stay and just work and life in general, really. So that's what's been keeping us for so long. Um, just trying to make sure that Mother had a place to stay before the winter really hit. I hope you find somewhere. Whereabouts are you right now? And I'll give him some nonsense area that's not accurate. Okay, but... <laughs> so you, you say somewhere on the other side of yeah. the river. Yeah. Um, tough places to be, but I'm glad that's, you have a place. It's absolutely, just having shelter. By. Having some shelter, especially for mother at this time of year. Um, but... Definitely. And I'm glad that this place is still available for everyone. It's so good to see a place of community. Oh, well, we're trying our best. Yes, you're doing good work. And thank you. And you see this tiredness on his face now. Mm -hmm. You take care of yourself. Well, we shouldn't you keep you too much longer. <laughs> no, it was great to see you. Plenty of customers. Yeah. Good to see you both. Take care. And do keep in touch. Stop by sometimes when you can. Do my best. <laughs> Have a pleasant night. And then try and get back out. <laughs> I will lead the way as again. I try and leave my drink on someone's table. <laughs> yeah. And few people as you are out will, will again. You, Yanina, like they look vaguely familiar. You didn't necessarily even speak to them. There is one older man who kind of uh, tags you, Yanina, on a sleeve and says, I'm glad to see you safe. Oh, thank you. It's nice to see you. I not, but mm -hmm. I... You don't um, really... <laughs> recognize him. <laughs> so um, that's, that's how Bear feels. <laughs> um, all your intelligence and wits. With difficulty eight, I would say, for this. Okay. Uh, I have two successes. One, so you uh, do actually recognize him. Like, you're <laughs> almost... You're about to walk away. 
uh, he doesn't also want to stop you for a conversation. And you get this memory that you remember that this is the man who was... You remember that he was looking for his daughter around the time when you discovered a lot of people have been kidnapped by Sabat and there were some murders and some were embraced by Sabat. Oh, no. <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, have you found your daughter? I probably say before I just leave. And you see this sadness and tiredness on his face. I'm sorry. No, I... I think I have to accept she who would do this a monster I see. they never identified all of the victims of some of those murders some people kept just went missing uh, I'm no, I, really sorry but thank you for asking of course I really hoped you had found her safely and you, you see him like wiping those tears oh. from his eyes and then take a shot of vodka and then do this wiping gesture again okay and you leave it has, yeah. oh do you want to continue no I just wanted to <laughs> say goodbye to him <laughs> nothing important yeah he, oh, stay safe you too says. you too and as you leave, you see him go to the bar to get another drink. <sighs> well. Well. What do you think about what he said? I'm worried. Me too. Because I'm afraid the Sabbat woman that likes to take on your face could have caused him. That seems incredibly likely. Well, who else can you do? I mean, you told Roman. I don't think Felicia. Roman's going to do yeah. anything like that. Mother d didn't seem... I don't know, but it might be wise to ask her just in case, you know. I suppose so. It would certainly be a better outcome if we find out that it was her. But I have a sinking feeling that it's not going to be her, but yes, we should check first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's eliminate suspects, I guess. <laughs> How do you want to proceed now? Well, let's head back to our haven and see whether Mother's there. All right. If she is, we can ask her. If not, head on back to Elysium. I've... Okay. Let's go then. <sighs> Start walking. And you walk. Eventually leaving Praga District. You don't need to cross the river to get to your haven. It is closer to here than Hotel Bristol. Um, you step into district adjacent to Prague Hour um, and walk between three, four-story buildings, some villas, mm -hmm. until you reach your building. Um, and we come inside come inside and uh, Felicia is currently not in the haven as you enter you don't find her there okay. Okay. Um, uh, but there is still a few hours in the night mm -hmm. what I'll do then is I'll leave her a note saying that I dropped by to come visit her but she wasn't in um, and that we'll be heading back to Elysium just um, for some further work I'll try and drop by again later. Meaning, like, note. other days. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. yeah. I just quickly check the, the the flat, if there's, like, anything new there, you know, just... Um, well, there would be for you. Home <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, she, she's been 
their last time with you, so yeah, you know, already so oh, they're yes, separated. Um, there the is um, there is a new tablecloth on the table with a little bit of lace on the sides. Uh, but that's about it. Okay. Then I'll add a note that I love the tablecloth. <laughs> How do you proceed? I, I guess, guess head back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm growing increasingly worried. <laughs> of course, that's understandable. But I guess we have to figure out what to do next. Mm. I suppose... Mm. No, it doesn't matter. I was maybe going to suggest that you you call and say that you have information, and, but and see if they say anything. But I'm, I'm not going to ask you to lie. So <laughs> um, I, I will do it. Uh, it's fine. Or I mean, you could also call her. Yeah yourself I, I, I doubt they would recognize your voice presumably if i married him he might know what i sound like <laughs> yeah but you also might talk completely differently now i'm not entirely willing to take that chance from the newspaper you in from generally knowing how rare the phones are right okay, you yes, would wouldn't be calling him directly be pretty sure that the number will be um to someone uh, at the agency or newspaper office right. that is handling um, those missing person looking for loved ones cases uh, rather than to um, your husband himself. Okay. okay, in which case that's fine then and I will call. Mm. Um, you do you want to call from here since we are alone here? Yes, it's yes, here's fine and it won't leave the hotel's number. <laughs> Um, okay. And I dialed the number. <laughs> I will sit next to Belle and just <laughs> eagerly like, yeah. watch her. And Bef Beforehand, I say, feel free to listen in. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> and you wait a little bit, but someone answers um, and says, like, hello, the missing person office, the newspaper. Yeah. Good evening. Um, I was calling with some information regarding one of the um, missing persons in the that was mentioned in the local newspaper, uh, Beatrice Tvozniak. Um, oh, Beatrice Tvozniak. Uh, let me have a look. Of course. Um, and you hear someone like, wrestling yeah. through the pages. I'm sitting there feeling quite weird, <laughs> <laughs> calling to report myself. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I from what I see here. Uh, Beatrice Wojcik has already been found and reunited with her husband, but thank you so much for being willing to help. Oh, that's wonderful news. Okay, well, excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I hope you have a pleasant night. <laughs> uh, uh, have a pleasant night as well. Thank you once again. Thanks. And I'll hang up and just go... <laughs> <laughs> well, yep, definitely sounds as though Beatrice Wojcik has been reunited with her husband. Well, unless you have a twin. Hmm. Do you have any... I guess you don't remember anything where you used to live or like anything that... Because right now there is no enough. way... Yeah, there is no way for us to proceed. I suppose I should have asked that when I was on the phone, but I didn't because I panicked. Um, you had the feeling you could have. Probably yeah, made up well. a story that would. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's quite likely that they just went, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've not really tried pushing back before. Well, maybe I did when I was first embraced, but I, I don't know whether I could. <sighs> oh, I don't know. Do you? I mean, do you want to find out who that was and what is happening? I mean... And in case if it was really the Sabbat woman, 
to help your husband. I think I would like to know what's happened and try and figure out what to do from there. Right, that's completely understandable. So I guess we really just, we have to figure out, maybe one of your friends from the, who initially gave you the newspaper, do you think they maybe could know anything? Uh, maybe, but it seems a bit weird for me to come to them asking where my husband lives. Um, maybe I, I could ask. Maybe that I'm a. I mean, I mean they, they've they've seen you around occasionally, so it's not like yes. you're an unknown person. Yeah, maybe. maybe that you moved in with your husband, and I'm looking for you. Maybe. Well, I'm I'm still sort of holding my journal, and I'm, I open it up and see the newspaper article. And I glance at the picture of myself, who's still wearing the locket. I wonder. And I pull out my map. Mm. And I take the locket and I focus on the concept of my family. The people who love me before. I don't. I don't know if this is going to work. It might not work, and that's a okay. But mm. it's just something I'm going to try because it's something I've Only done. Your in the past. perception and awareness with difficulty ten. Yeah, that's true. I might spend my last point of willpower on this. I just completely. I would advise you not to because okay. I'm very much inclined for it to not be very conclusive. Okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. Fair because. Enough of how vague it yep. all is. Yep, no, absolutely. And including what even you're focusing on. Yep, that's absolutely fair. I just thought but I'll give something you something fair would try. <laughs> if you succeed. Okay. Okay, difficulty 10. Ah, I rolled one 10 and a 1, unfortunately. Oh no. Oh well. Then no, perhaps yeah. because when you think family, well, what I, comes to your mind when you think family? I guess I'm trying to focus on the idea of like a husband, but I literally can't picture it. Um, and the idea of family, I see mother and Yanina, and and then I maybe try focusing my thoughts elsewhere, and by that point it isn't working, and I'm getting frustrated. Um, oh well. And um, tell you what. Because uh, I feel bad about this <laughs> <laughs> willpower thing. I'm, I'm totally fine with it not yeah. working. <laughs> uh, I know, but still, because you're kind of you, you do find that you're thinking of Yanina and yeah. your mother, mm -hmm. uh, and you're frustrated. But you are trying to kind of pick in the beyond. Mm -hmm. um, so roll your. Um, Perception and occult, uh, but with difficulty nine. Okay. Okay, so that would be three, that's a one, so that is two successes. Two successes. So as you are getting frustrated and you're trying to pick into these memories uh, that you don't really have <laughs> um you can't mm -hmm. but you get this brief flash from somewhere of feelings you get a flash of love closeness you get a flash of relief and you get a uh, and for a moment you remember it and you see it right now and then you get this a uh, flash of it all being wrapped in lies and danger. I scribbled that down in my notebook. What is it? Well, nothing helpful for finding a location. Uh, there's a feeling of love and relief and it's wrapped in lies and danger. So... 
I guess it really is the, the Sabbat woman. I think it's quite likely. I guess she's really obsessed with you. I was going to say, can she not get a hobby? But I think this might be her hobby, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I guess we really can take a shot and me asking your friends about your husband and looking for you. And maybe they could point me somewhere. I... Would you mind if I spoke to the sheriff first? I'd like to ask. Of course. His... Of course. It's a... your matter. Thank you. Of course. Mm. Now, do you want to have, head back? Maybe we can catch sheriff in the museum. Maybe. <laughs> or find something to occupy us. Yeah. <sighs> Right, let's go then. Anyway, we're coming back to the hotel. Yes. Uh, and you walk back to the hotel. Yanina, what are you thinking about on the way back? Well, right now, I guess I'm preoccupied with Bea's matter. <laughs> because... I worry about her husband and I know that she doesn't have like any feelings for him but still he was in her past and he cared about her and she clearly cared about him before and just the imagine that this Sabbat woman is trying to impersonate her and I don't know for what reason I guess for fun I guess it's for fun and I know I don't know if to hurt Bea I don't know, it's just, it's strange to me that she's so obsessed with Bea to a point that she just inserts herself in her life. So I guess that's mainly, maybe there are like some things about the bar that we met that when Andre talked about the Pavel and his family and I felt very bad, <laughs> so that's why mm. I didn't talk much with him because I just I felt wrong, lying, mm. and and about Mara just being gone. Mm. But I guess Bea's matter is most urgent one in my mind right now. Yes, Pavel and Mara are just memories now, aren't they? Unfortunately. Uh, and you, Bea, what are you thinking about on the way back? I'm growing concerned. There's part of me concerned for this man's well-being. I've never, like, as far as I'm concerned, I've never met him. But I wouldn't wish the fate of... having a Sabbat member pretend to be your wife that you've been missing for some time on anyone, really. <laughs> um, so, on the other hand, there's this, there's this weirdly pragmatic part at the back of my brain that is going, maybe it's for the best if the Sabbat deals with him, and there's another part of me that hates that. Um... <sighs> It's almost like the good little Camarilla pawn is sort of going, if if he's removed from the situation, then he can't keep looking for me. Then there's not a masquerade breach there. And then there's there's this other part of me that's like angry at even thinking that. Um, and I'm concerned, but this is just all unfamiliar territory to me. And I'm just really uncertain on how to proceed, so hence me wanting to go back to the sheriff if he's around. Um, and you walk across Vistula River, uh, now frozen, uh, with the ice surface covered in snow, and across the city towards Hotel Bristol. And you step inside and you notice that the cafe is now open again and there is 
um, some classical um, joyful music playing and some people chatting and laughing uh, as life has been restored to this place. I think that brings me some comfort. Um, and as we walk in, I do sort of take a moment and pause and actually look into the cafe and admire all the people in there and take comfort from the fact that there's life back in the place again. And you see some people in uh, military uniforms and uh, some people sitting with them at the table laughing. You see a couple uh, a uh, man in the uniform and a woman laughing, speaking in Russian uh, and kissing. And you continue after taking it all in. Um, and you continue upstairs towards... I guess, yeah. hmm? Sorry. I guess, no, I just want to say that we are going to the museum, I guess. You are, and... Uh, I think as you step into Elysium, it's a good moment to end for tonight. So thank you very much for playing. Thank you for running. You were amazing. <laughs> thank Both you. you. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who has been watching us. We really appreciate you following the story with us. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll continue to follow uh, what Bea and Janina get up to in Warsaw in 1940s. Uh, we have some strange scheduling coming up again, but some things should be back to normal. Uh, so the next stream will actually be in three weeks instead um, of two. Uh, so on the 24th of January, and it will be the same time, 6.30 p.m. GMT, here on the Lamias channel. Um, we hope you will join us Um to see what happens next with Bea's husband. And after that, we should be finally back to the normal every two weeks schedule, fingers crossed for that. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for your support and good night. Thank good you. Good night. Bye-bye.